Welcome to Mobile Presence, your destination for everything mobile. I'm your host, as always, Peggy Unsalt, mobile analyst, tech consultant, senior Forbes writer, and founder of Mobile Groove. And I just have to say that because it's the end of the year, and we have a lot to be thankful for. We also have learned to adapt. We've learned to roll with the punches if you're marketers because it was a year that tested your mettle. You almost don't even want to think about predictions for the new year. You don't want to put yourself on that limb, but guess what? My guest is going to do it. She's up for the challenge. Named one of the most powerful women in mobile advertising by Business Insider, my guest is also the recipient of the 2021 Marketing Leader of the Year Award by Masthead Media. She's the CMO of AppLovin a leading marketing software company with powerful integrated solutions for developers to grow their businesses. So she has the overview of growth and what marketers want to know to grow. So Katie Jensen, thank you and welcome to Mobile Presence, Katie. Great to have you. Great. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm just curious. Did you make any predictions about 2021? Are you one of those people who says, hey, look what I predicted and look what came true. Did that happen to you? <laughs> I have to be honest, you know, being here at Apple in 2021 um, was very much all focused on our um, IPO. So I did, um, you know, towards the end of 2020, predict that we were going to IPO because we were kind of in the <laughs> in the depths of all the work we were doing to IPO. I know that's not an exciting um, prediction that um, really applies to a lot of the users, but that's really where we were um, as a company, and um, we, were, we were doing a lot. It, and to your point, such a difficult time then and now, um, although now we just at least have a, have a little better idea of the steady state we're dealing with. It was really difficult to make um, predictions. I think very general predictions that we thought um, that have really come to pass were just simply the growth of the app industry, the growth of apps within the industry, when you just have more people at home, more of that on-demand um, need, more of the I need it at my home <laughs> uh, sediment that was going through um, everybody. And I think, um, so we made predictions around that that have all come to pass, I think, um, but nothing to uh, groundbreaking or earth shattering, I would say. A little more on the boring, obvious side. Sorry. <laughs> No, no. I mean, I was just thinking about an IPO and, you know, in these times, what did you do? I'm just curious. You know, was it like celebrating virtually? Uh, what, what did you do to mark that? I'm just curious. Yeah. So it was April of um, this year. So we actually were able to go to New York. I will tell you it was back and forth, first of all. First of all, it's not easy to plan um, an IPO and the IPO celebration, as you can imagine, um, historically for for those who don't watch the bell ringing every day, like I didn't, you have hundreds of employees that get to go um, to the trade floor historically and ring the bell and celebrate. Um, obviously, with um, the pandemic, you aren't going to have hundreds of employees all in one place um, physically together. So we kind of did a hybrid. We were lucky enough to do a hybrid. So many of the um, IPOs before us had to do all virtual. There just wasn't an option. I think we were you know, the fourth or fifth IPO to come out to have a little bit of a physical presence. So eight of us were able to go um, and be on the trade, you know, then at the NASDAQ and um, then, you know, all masked up and COVID, you know, multiple COVID tests um, to keep it safe. And then we also had our employees there virtually celebrating as well. So you know, the downside was that that close physical contact and just being together and seeing each other we weren't able to have. But on the flip side, we were able actually to include a lot more employees, a lot more employees from all over the globe. And a lot more people got to participate. And um, we also did this awesome thing that they um, had just launched with an app where our, we sent swag to our employees and they took pictures in the swag with their family members or their dogs or friends, whoever they wanted. And then they, we were able to post their pictures on digital billboards in Times Square. So it was just a lot of new things that the NASDAQ had introduced to kind of um, make it cool virtually. And I think the upside was there was just a lot more inclusion of everybody at the company too. Very, very interesting because inclusion, of course, was a big 
big topic in 2021 for, for companies, for marketing. We saw that. But I want to get back to the predictions. So 2021, um, you know, massive growth for the app economy, you know, great success for App Love and with your IPO and other developments. Let's look ahead. 2022, you said you're going to do it. You're going to get out on that limb, Katie. You're going <laughs> to hand over a couple of, we're going to, we're going to just riff on what you think we need to be looking for. What yeah. would be your number one? Well, I think to make it, you know, to talk not about App 11, but to make it more about the economy, just to be clear, Thanks like you're too. talking yeah. about, mm -hmm. that can apply to all. Um, I think we're just going to continue to see this vibrant creator economy, right? I think what we've seen in, what I am very excited about that we've seen in 2020 um, and 2021 is really that we have these creators, we have these local creators, these extremely creative people that are out there producing apps, they're out there producing content, they're out there doing YouTube, they're out there doing, I mean, they're everywhere, right? And it's just growing. I mean, it's TikTok, it's YouTube, it's Insta Reels, um, it's the apps themselves. And I think it's something like over 50 million independent creators, curators, and community build builders. I mean, that's huge, right? That's like over a hundred billion dollar market. Um, that's predicted in 2022. And I personally, like professionally love it, personally love it. I love seeing all these people get to go out there and shine and create different things. And we're able to really connect with it now that we're, I, I mean, for me anyways, that we're a little less scheduled, right? We're a little, we have a little more time in between meetings. We're at home <laughs> a little bit more than we used to be. And these, these different ways of connecting with the content, I think it's huge. You know, YouTube, I think put out that they're expected to generate some $30 billion in revenue by the end of the year, just from these self-made entrepreneurs. Like, I mean, I just find that to be so exciting, um, for these, for folks and for us in terms of the level of diverse content that we're getting. I mean, it is really exciting because the growth is not just the growth of the economy, but there's like this real organic growth. This is like, you know, that mass that we used to talk about, right? Remember the long tail and it was the old idea that, you know, we have a long tail and we have all these possibilities for apps and there's really going to be an app for that. Um, and then we sort of maybe lost the plot just a little bit, focused, had some great blockbuster apps, but now you're talking about the creator economy. I mean, is there a vertical or something you're watching or that you're very excited about, or maybe, maybe even verticals you're exploring because, hey, now there's just more choice. I'm a health and fitness nut. So just from a personal perspective, I'd say that's where I've seen a lot. Um, you know, App Annie said like, I think it was 2020 or 2021, there's like, you know, over 70 thousand health and fitness apps <laughs> launched. I mean, that's huge. And I'll be honest, before the pandemic, I, I very rarely engaged in them. I would go to more traditional gym classes. I'd go to yoga studios and I find it to be awesome. I mean, I must have, you know, 30 or 40 of these apps just on my phone alone. <laughs> um, because, you know, again, you know, tying back to the IPO, you don't have a lot of time. So to be able to take these bite-sized bits of content, like a 10 minute workout here, a 15 minute workout here, a 20 minute, and kind of cobble them together for your traditional hour long class that you go into and to do it with different apps and to just get like different instructors, different types of content. Um, I was always really hesitant to do it because I, I like the personal instruction and I've also started to see recently, and I don't know if you've seen um, some of these, but there's health and fitness apps that are now um, really invested in AI so that you can actually see if your position is correct and how to correct your position. And they actually give you um, help on your form, which I think is huge. Um, so you're also, you're not only seeing more apps, but you're seeing the apps get more sophisticated um, and more tailored to what the users need to continue using those apps, even when, you know, those studios and those live classes are back. Um, and I think that's great to see. They're thinking about, okay, how can I continue to keep people engaged and going forward? You have another prediction, or rather what you see as a model that's going to really um, gain some traction in 2022. It's all about not going it 
alone. Mm. Tell me about that. Yeah, I, yeah. To kind of to take back to what you said, I think look, the the landscape is changing. Mobile is fast, right? Like, what you know to get mobile has been around for what ten or so years, and it did what the internet did in what twenty, thirty, I don't know, <laughs> maybe even more years. Um, and so it's constantly changing. I mean, you have you can't ignore the privacy changes that are happening, and just we're talking about more apps right now that does mean more competition. That's a lot more competition. UA is costly for smaller apps. UA is just costly, I guess, in general. I think it's a good way to think about it, right? I think there's ways for content creators to partner with one another. I think, you know, the larger companies can obviously start to rely a lot more on the cross-promotion piece. Um, I think that smaller, uh, newer apps, the indie apps, I'm starting to hear them talk about, okay, how can we partner? You don't necessarily even need to be one company. Um, You don't need to get acquired by a big company. I can be a yoga app who partners with a Pilates app, who partners with a meditation app, right? And we can actually cross promote one another's just through um, more organic cross promo deals. And I love the um, innovation and just the kind of, uh, I don't know, like partnership friendship that says, right? Like I'm small, we're small together. I don't necessarily, like not everyone wants to take over the world with their app. A lot of people want to do what they do so well creatively and build a a business and a living, but they don't need to be Amazon, right? (laughs) Um, So I love just kind of that local building. Um, I think also getting apps in different verticals to take lessons from some of the gaming apps. Gaming apps is obviously something we know really well here at AppLovin, but also um, they have been on the forefront of, you know, how to acquire and how to monetize for a long time now. And other verticals are, are quite frankly, you know, just catching up. So moving beyond the social platforms, Facebook and Google are usually always things you test with for any kind of UA. So I think moving beyond and adding more partners Um, more and more platforms are getting a lot more sophisticated. Um, So to target them with relevant ads and engaging ads, that becomes more important, right? As the, you know, the privacy landscape changes, um, the more engaging and interesting the ad, um, the better. Um, How do you speak to your users and get them engaged? Testing matters a ton too. So even for smaller um, apps, making sure that you, when you launch something new in the app, making sure you test it. Um, And you can easily do that simply through ads or something like that, but test it to a small group before you launch it to your entire audience. You've worked really hard to get these folks, these engaged customers. You don't want to lose them because of the new feature. Um, All of those things I think can help you no matter what the size and can kind of help you bob and bob and weave in this new um, landscape. And it's always changing too, right? Like what we see now will probably be, will be, it'll be something different in like three months. <laughs> it's about opportunities for indies, which is great. You know, you're talking about, okay, and, you know, not everyone can own the world. You know, these yeah. are, there are, there are, you know, there are great indie apps. And if you can just band together and maybe someone has a fitness app, I've seen a lot of really cool stuff between personal fitness, mm-hmm. right? And personal wellness and financial wellness. So I'm yes. seeing like FinTech getting together yes. with fitness. You might say, well, isn't that really interesting? But it's all really about managing your life. Yes. And you get these partnerships right. And it's going to be very exciting. Yes. Or the crypto NFTs um, that are coming out. A lot of people are talking about, you know, crypto and NFTs and, and how they'll be a big part of games, which I tot- I completely believe. But I also think to your point partnerships are avail- available in verticals well beyond that. I don't see why that can't be relevant in health and wellness. I don't see why it can't be re- relevant in e-commerce. There's a lot that can be done across vertical. And I think it's going to be a really exciting year to see that. And of course, underlying all of this um, engagement, but I'm hearing that you're a bit bullish on NFTs. Let me dive into that a bit, Katie. Why are you uh, thinking that? Maybe they'll be like your sub-third uh, prediction for 2022. <laughs> They're coming on strong. Yeah, I, I believe so. I, I believe so. I think we'll see it in the game, in games, in mobile games. Um, you're already starting to see it. Some of it in in some games, but think think about it. Right? There's already goods. There's already virtual goods that you're buying. Um, the 
the gaming community is just ripe for um, NFTs and crypto coin, you know, buying crypto coin, having their own crypto wallets. Think about some, now this is more moving away from the, the indies right away, but, you know, kind of to launch it, think about some of these bigger studios having, you know, their own coin or their own marketplace. It seems just ripe for that. And I think we'll really start to see that next year. So we talked about networking because there's strength in numbers in mobile and apps, you know, every app is an island. Why not get together? And there's, as I said, strength in numbers, but there's also strength that comes from within, you know, the personal growth. And uh, looking at your background, you're also a very strong advocate for workplace equality. You provide mentorship to help other women in tech, you know, helping women up the ladder. You also serve as a marketing advisor to organizations such as Women 2.0, Women in Wireless, I know very well. Um, talking about networking, let's turn it around and talk about what's your advice uh, you gave us app growth. How about personal growth? What is some advice or even a trend you see there in 2022? For me personally, networking has taken a bit of a hit <laughs> in the past year or two. I like being around um, people live. I was not one that really gravitated towards the um, networking on Zoom and drinking alone in my office for networking happy hours. That was, <laughs> I would not say. Yeah, that, that. was something. We're yeah. all going to mix the virtual drink. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I did it once and I was, oh, not my cup of tea. Um, but um, I'm excited for for more things to come back. I have for, I think there is, you know, there's the traditional groups, right? There's Mobile Connect, there's MMA, there's the, the traditional more mobile groups. I'm hoping to see um, some of their events come up. I do think that they have done a great job on virtual events and I think it's important to stay connected um, through some of their virtual events. I'm looking forward. I do think in 2022, we will see hopefully just at least some smaller events pop up. I don't know if we'll get like the really big ones um, that we're used to in the industry, but even just smaller, more intimate connections. And I think you can breed a lot of great connections out of that. Um, I think you have the, the local things where, you know, Chief, which is a woman's exec um, group right now that they are curating these small local groups um, specifically for women execs, invite only. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about them. And um so I think those are the things I'm I'm going to kind of start with next year. I would not say I have been um, as connected as doing those virtually, but I'm I'm my goal is to do more of a hybrid approach, just like with everything. Can I do a few virtual connections and then find a way to do even if it's like an outdoor, you know, fifteen person dinner or something like that. Any tips on where to find this? Because some indies they also ask me. They're like, you know, I'm I'm upping my game. I'm going to be more part of the industry, you know, where do you hear about these places? And I'm like, well, there's certain Slack channels you need to be into or certain LinkedIn groups or something, but it's like, well, yeah, but where do you start? Just uh, curious because you rattled off a number of different uh, events and possibilities out there. How would or how could uh, a developer or marketer find out about them? Is there, uh, is it something that you maybe even you at App and um, curate or, 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 you know, maybe we should. Yeah. That's actually a good well, idea. Maybe, maybe, maybe we this should. Is idea because everyone's like, well, this is great if you're connected. Yeah, but, I hear that. You know, I'm I, not yet. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Yeah. We should. I mean, we do. We definitely have an industry events page. So that's like industry events. We okay. go to all the um, the regular events. Seamless uh, app love and promotion here. You should check out our events page. Um, I do think there's a lot of great um, forums, right? That like you're talking about. I think the Slack channels are great um, to be connected in, but it is, it's not like a, a pushed list you can just reference. It's like if you're in the conversation, you hear about it, but as you step away, then you might've missed something. Those are awesome. I think more curated lists um, would be good. And I don't, I have to say, I don't know of some strong curated list that talks about events. So I guess we could, we should just do that. 2022 okay, App Lovin will curate events <laughs> list. <laughs> Fantastic. We get, we get, we'll get one of your sort of like your resolutions for the new year. And we're thinking, okay, what are we going to do differently in next year? What are you going to do better? You know, we are all thinking about this, right? Any off the wall resolutions you've made or maybe something where it's like, you know, I wish I would have done that. So that's what I'm going to have top of the list. What can you share, Katie? Well, I mean, I don't want to take it back to what we were just talking about, but uh, 
talking to you now and, you know, prior has made me realize that I just, I, for me personally, I need to just to do more networking. I do. I think, look, I'm a new ex- public company executive, right? Like we went IPO this year in April. I've never been a public company executive. I've been a, a startup executive. And so finding ways to network um, and learn um, in that area, I think is really important. It's, it's my personal goal is to keep the hunger, the speed, the quick decision making of a startup that AppLovin is known for and so good at doing that the focus on the dev, be able to keep all of that um, while still, you know, figuring out all these new um, public executive uh things that you have to do, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what happens. I mean, you, you were a startup. I mean, I've known App Lovin since the very start, right? And you have that culture and you're like really cool and everything. And then, okay, now you're a startup grown up, but um, that doesn't mean, you know, the fun stops, the energy above all stops. It's about keeping that, keeping that going. Um, Katie, we do have to wrap it up. But uh, I do want to thank you so much for sharing. It was above all, it was authentic and real, which is what I'm hearing all the time. Everything needs to be, all content has to be real. And in that spirit, how can our audience stay in touch with you? Oh, how can they continue the conversation with you? What's yeah. the best way? You can just hit me up on my email. I'm very um, available. I, I'm, one of the other things is um, at App Levin, we're direct and responsive. I'm just Katie at App Levin. I'm old school. I have <laughs> I've been here for a go. very long time, uh, almost nine years. So I have one of the just original emails. So you can just hit me up, Katie at AppLovin. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I will respond. Um, yeah. And I think we are, I would like to say, you know, we are, we are definitely keeping that startup mentality. <laughs> just look at just, we'll just roll right off an IPO and acquire Mopub. I mean, it, it doesn't get any it has been amazing. I was going to talk about all of that, but maybe that's another story for another time. Sure. Because I mean, yeah. there are so many stories. People are like, you know, wow, this industry is changing. It's transforming. Have you been watching App Love? And it's like, yes, we have. But I think we have to have you back and maybe talk a little bit more about that. But for right now, hey, you know, we're at that point. We not only close the show, we uh, and see you on the other side, Katie. Yes, thank you. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Really appreciate the time. Thanks, Peggy. Absolutely. And, of course, if you want to keep up with me throughout the week, find out more about how you can be a guest or sponsor on Mobile Presence, then you can email me. Yes, I am old school, too. Email me, Peggy, at mobilegroove.com. And you can, of course, check out this and all early episodes of our show by going to wmr.fm Or you can find our shows on Amazon, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, every place that matters, simply by searching Mobile Presence. And hey, don't forget, we have our video, right? Powered by the groove, my groove, the groove on YouTube, Mobile Presence, bringing you the guests, the insights, everything you need to know. So until next time, remember, every minute is mobile, so make every minute count. Keep well, stay safe, and we will see you soon. Mm 